Where we're going is arguably the worst serial killings that you have ever seen in Australian history. It's a very eerie place. It was the exact location where John Bunting and Robert Wagner stored bodies in the barrels in a disused bank vault in Snowtown. Uh, Travelling down the same road, the same path, that they took all those years ago. It was only in 1999 that police officers stormed the vault and found bodies in barrels within the vault. So it's it's a pretty crazy feeling going there. Um, it's amazing how long they got away with it for. Police officers started to get suspicious when people had died, gone missing, but their um, cards were still being used to gain money. Before the murders were committed, they would um, torture them and get their pin number for there to be a belief that these people were still alive. They made them do um, recordings, like left on like voicemail, which basically said, you know, I'm going away. Um, you're not going to see me again. I've had enough. Um, this is the last that you're ever going to see of me or hear from me. They did that to trick their family and friends into believing that they had just gone. When in fact they were murdered directly after that, right? When the police got suspicious, they actually tracked where these payments were coming out from. And they put in security cameras and sure enough, they found that Robert Wagner was taking money from someone else. As the suspicion grew, they started to link other missing people with um, Robert Wagner and John Bunting and they started to follow these people from Adelaide to Snowtown. Yeah. And they got, um, they did interviews in Snowtown and talked to people and there was a lot of suspicious behavior that was going on. This was going on for seven years, 1992 to 1999. Yeah, these killings were happening for a long time, but it wasn't for a long time that they started to uh, connect the dots. Yeah, yeah. And once they started to connect the dots, they realised, hang on, we need to follow this because people are dying, people are going missing. Um, we don't know where they are, but there was always this link yeah. between Bunting, Wagner and um, the missing people in Salisbury. Yeah. So something that we've got to remember is um, Snowtown was an innocent town, which we're heading to right now, which is approximately 150 kilometres north of Adelaide. Snowtown had nothing to do with the killings, yeah. right? It was just a, a place where the bodies were stored. The last killing, it was, it was horrific, gruesome. Where we're going is arguably the worst serial killings that you have ever seen in Australian history. And that is a big call because you think of names like Ivan Milat. These guys were more brutal, more, more savage. Do you? Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Realistically, if you're doing this sort of stuff. Yeah. Sometimes people come to this town as tourists and go to the wrong bank. And they just think, oh yeah, that's a bank. We'll just stand So out that must be it. And they stand out there yeah, and they take, take photographs. photographs. Yeah. So, you know. Just completely wrong. Done yep. absolutely no research whatsoever. And that's right. <laughs> it, the locals just and sit back And because it laugh. says English Scottish Australia Bank, and the other one doesn't have anything on it. Wow. So here we have the old bakery. Yeah, that's the old bakery and that's heritage listed. He made fantastic pasties. There's truckies that travel all across Australia to get them. The hotel is actually the oldest building in town. Yeah. Anyway, that's my place, boys. Oh, wow. Okay. Now I've got a small dog and I've got a large dog. Get, get back, get back. She's 100%, took 100% responsibility. Yeah. Three broken ribs, okay. a pulverized spleen, and wow. I've lived in the area most of my life. Okay, yes. and this, uh, your house here, you've lived here for three years, yep. and before that you were? On the farm. Okay, so yeah. you were on the farm pretty much your whole life. My passion is uh, hunting, mm. uh, motorbikes and farming, was farming. Yeah. What sort of hunting do you do? Uh, well, uh, deer, anything feral, not allowed to hunt people, but 
not in this state anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe you are, yeah. you know. <laughs> Talk about Snowdown, there we are. Yeah. You know, so Snowtown is a farming community. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and early on, the early establishment was the railways. Yeah. And everything migrated to the railways. Yeah. So I'm picturing a really quiet, peaceful town, and then all of a sudden there's this huge, huge incident yep. that happens within Snowtown. Yep. When was the first exact moment and time where you started to realise what was going on with the Snowtown murders? When the choppers started arriving. So there was helicopters? Yep, news helicopters. It wasn't so much the police, because the police had been moving around for a few days. I suppose casing the area, working out where everything was, who's what, yeah. you know, uh, I suppose following up all their leads to make sure everything was correct. What was the thing that sort of led them to that bank vault? There'd been a number of people go missing and they were following up reports of vehicles in driving around the area that were from those people had gone missing. So um, a guy, he lived in the old Catholic manse and they visited him because he had one of these vehicles. He'd obviously go to, gone to register it and obviously uh, a red flag came up mm. and they went and visited him. He explained that he was looking after the bank yeah. for a couple of people and they'd, as in lieu of money, they'd given him this vehicle as a payment. So he was oblivious to the situation and they said, what bank? And they, he said, oh, the one over the railway line. So then they went around to the bank, opened it up, he had a key. There was a, a couple living in the house at the back of the bank, because you can get to the bank yeah. through the side without going into the house, yeah. like any business, normal business. Yeah. So then he let them into there. There was computer stuff everywhere, and they brought all this computer stuff and clothing and furniture and all that that was possibly from the victims. They opened the bank vault and I think a few of them threw up pretty well yeah. straight away so because there would have been just this smell. Well you've got a your bank yeah. vault generally is a lead lined. Yeah. So most of any odors are kept within it. Yeah. So it's pretty hard you know, there possibly would be a little bit of a odor there, you know, yeah. of death or something like that. No different to yeah. going into a butcher shop or, you mm. know, whether you record this or not. But um I would surmise more likely that it was a trophy house. Yeah. That they were tenderizing the flesh for eventually consumption, some of it for consumption. Consumption. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Snowdown was just the final destination on a journey. Mm. They were, they'd been to Lock Hill, stored at Lock Hill. They'd been over at a place called Hoylton. They'd been stored over there for a couple of years. You know, they've been stored down in Adelaide. So they've moved these things around. Does the stigma frustrate you and the locals? Oh, well, not now, but initially, yes. In an instance, Snowtown lost its innocence. Exactly, yeah. Anyway, we're, we're here at your house right now. How, what distance would it be from here to the, the bank from here? Uh, right we're now? about a block away. A block away. Well, how about we walk on over there and um, we'll have a bit of a look and you can tell us a bit about what went on there and where the vault was and all that. All right. Brilliant, thank you. Right, eh? This used to be the old police station. Yep. Anywhere where they've got an old blue flashing light is a police station. When the incident happened, obviously police station less than a block away from where the bodies were. So anyone that said that thing about they could walk past and smell the yeah. bodies yeah. is all yeah. highly unlikely. It was definitely open when the bodies were discovered and it probably went for about 10 years after that. There were two police officers here at that time. They didn't notice anything. Yeah. Because the guys would come on weekends mm. and, and the police would be out on the highway or doing other duties. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so here, just walking down here, we've got the IGA. We've got the famous pub a little bit further on. Yep. And about 80 metres from here, we've got the, the famous bank. That's correct. We're in a very famous place right now, aren't we? We are. The disused state bank. This is where it all happened. It did. Crazy. This is where they found them. 
It was closed for about 12 years before the bodies were discovered. Yeah. If we walk along here, that's right at the back here? At the back of the bank building, yes. Okay. But not in the residence area. So there was an open area uh, where the, the counters used to be, and then around the back yep. is a vault. Okay. That's uh, concreted into the building. Yeah, the acid used uh, hydrochloric. If yep. they had used sulfuric, it may have done a better job. But like you were saying, maybe it was more of like a, a trophy. trophy. Yeah. Tenderizing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's an awful thought. They were delivered here, and they told the guy over the road that there was kangaroo meat. That what? was incredible. What? That was absolutely wow. That was good. This, I've never heard anything in a documentary about Snowtown like that before, that ever. Was good. What part you didn't hear? The oh, now you're all going to be under on cameras, right? Because he's got security cameras. Once they'd worked out that there were numbers of bodies, people's remains, yeah. then they pretty well shut this system down and uh, focused on who was missing and they followed up with all the computer stuff, all the clothing, did DNA testing and followed it up from there because they realised that it was outside of this town that were people were involved. There wasn't anyone in this town. They knocked that out of the equation pretty quickly. Yeah. So, no, they didn't really interview anybody for it. They might have stayed at the pub you know, yeah. the police, that sort of thing. Or maybe they asked the publican at the time about any, with, whether he'd seen anything. Um, and he may have alluded to the trailer and the moving stuff in and out, but I don't yeah. think there was much else. I know that there's been talk about um, making financial gain off Snowtown. Was there talk about this being set up as sort of like a... Oh, yes. Yeah. There's yeah. been talk of demolishing it, like they did down at Salisbury, that house down at Salisbury, yeah. and make it a park. And here they wanted to... Yeah, there were some also. people who wanted to do the same thing. It would, in some people's eyes, make the situation less of a target for people to come and visit. Yeah, I came through here um, 2013, so eight years ago. So um, that was the first time I had a photo out front of the bank. So you're as grotesque as everyone else that stops here? Maybe, yeah. The building just up there, that was a second-hand store and they had magnets in there, you know, uh, yeah, it'd be the barrel and there'd be a few hands coming out oh. or you'd have uh, Welcome to Snowtown, you know, dead centre of the universe, oh. all those sort of things. It's no different to the advertiser or film crews coming here to make money out of a gruesome event. Exactly. It's all about making money. Is there truth uh, behind the fact that Snowtown was considering a name change? Maybe somebody might have muted it, but... Yeah. No, like I said earlier, you know, what's Truro going to do or yeah. London or, you know, all the other. Uh, I've never seen Ulsh, which changed their name, yeah. you know, for the same reason. Exactly. You have it's, a point. it's part of history. Even, you know, Hiroshima, yeah. 120,000 people died in one instant. It's, they're still Hiroshima. They're not exactly. changing it. Well, here we are. We're outside the bank, um, the very famous bank here in Snowtown. You've been absolutely fantastic, Greg. No worries. I'd like to thank you. And I'll give you a oh, bit of an elbow okay. yep. in COVID times. Yeah. <laughs> and wishing you all the best, mate. Thanks no worries. very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting yeah. you. Thanks for your time, Greg.